We're moving on to a, well, a strange one, really. On the BBC, a 10-part podcast series has launched examining the life of former ISIS bride Shamima Begum. It'll apparently provide the full account of what really happened after she ran away from London to join the terror group. But it sparked a backlash against the broadcaster, who's been accused of giving her a platform. They, on the other hand, have called it a robust public interest investigation. Now, Ben, there's no doubt it will be in some people's interest to watch this. Well... Or they'll be interested to watch it. I mean, my view on Shamima Begum is this is a, a woman now, albeit 15 when she went across to the Middle East, who has been ruled by the Supreme Court unworthy of having British nationality. So she's been through, you know, the case has been right through the Supreme Court. And whatever we feel about her personally and about the way she was a child when she left and so on, whatever our personal judgment is, the highest court in this land has adjudicated that she is not worthy of being a British citizen. At that point, I think it does behove the national broadcaster that is paid for by the taxpayer <laughs> not to be giving her a platform. Well, this is what um, I want well, to ask to the on. viewers at home, whether this makes them yeah. want to tear up their BBC licence fee or whether they're actually quite interested before Joe, in listen. I mean, this, Joe and well, I may be in disagreement here, well, but before, we will... before you jump in, I just, look, if Netflix want to give her a platform in the way that they gave Harry one, that's Netflix's prerogative. But I think when it comes nice to... Nice comparison the... of Shamima with Harry. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are victimhood <laughs> issues with both of them. We both fled the country. <laughs> but, you know, for the national broadcaster to be effectively giving a right, of, uh, to, 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 a right to this woman to voice her mm. views and to somehow, it can only be to sort of semi-legitimize her, just absolutely crawls at me, you know, at our cost. Well, this is my concern, that it does give her a platform. Well, it does doesn't. Make her no, more, it doesn't. It does legitimize it absolutely her doesn't. It is a It is a ten-part series made by an extremely uh, well-respected journalist, Josh, Josh Baker, who has made many, many programmes, award-winning programmes for a variety of broadcasters. I heard the first episode today on Radio 4, and I thought it was fascinating because what... It, he was saying, mm. interspersed with her um, audio takes, um, is that actually this was quite clear. This was not a naive young girl who was being groomed. This was a very intelligent, well-organised, um, you know, along with her friends whose names I'm afraid I, I've forgotten at the moment. But, you know, they were really prepared. They knew exactly what they were doing. Now, that to me, is not giving her a platform. And I don't see... Well, it is giving her a platform. It's, it's giving, it is using her um, as a story in the same way that Gabriel Gatehouse, another extremely good journalist, went in to investigate QAnon. It's like Louis Theroux, who made the terrible mistake of interviewing Jimmy Savile, who at the time was lauded by the BBC and an awful lot of people probably watching this programme. I it's not historical. It is in many ways, still a live case. Well, Does it, that change matters? It is historical because it's a story of how she got to where she is now. But why do we care how she got well, to where because she is I, now? Well, because I think it's... Why does a national broadcaster care? There must be care? an agenda. I th I think, no, I don't think... I think it's an interesting story because the fact that we're talking about it now and the fact that there will be some people out there who say she was an innocent victim, she was groomed, she didn't know what she was doing... We have got other people saying, as you've said, Ben, she should never come back to this country. We've got other people, as Nigel Nelson was saying earlier on Patrick's programme, what would have happened to her children had the three children survived? They would have been British citizens. Um, where would they have ended up? Um, because you can't make under 18 stateless mm -hmm. just because of the crimes of the parent. And I do think it's a valid um, examination if people were willing to listen to it properly. It is not a one-sided well, programme. Well, I did what? listen to the first episode because I knew we were going to discuss it. Well, thank you. <laughs> and and um, I found it neither pro Shamima or nor anti her. I but that's the point, it's it setting was, it out, the yeah, facts. But, but to, be, to be giving a kind of platform to a woman who has been adjudged not to be worthy of British citizenship because of crime she's committed effectively against the United Kingdom by our national broadcaster is a matter of principle. But, it, but it's not giving a platform to her, it's giving a platform to a journalist. Does it not include many interviews with her? Yes, of course so it that's does. That's giving her a but, platform but, you know, to the, give her grievances and what she thinks... In the context of a journalistically... Well, I will probably listen to it all. Uh, because 
I do actually find it very interesting. But I do worry that it that these sort of things must have an agenda, and it may skew opinion more. Well, I think, uh, I mean, no, Emily, I think, I think you know, I think the you're caption. underestimating, and I think you're being extremely dismissive of extremely good. Journalism. But the caption for the show is I'm not a well, monster. That's a that quote. is an offensive headline. Well, it's well, a it, quote. That, well, but, I mean, that's what they're promoting. So that's yeah. what they're but hooking then the audience but that, with. What, but what they're saying is you, you don't have to listen to it. I'm sure many people will have made their minds up. They think it's disgraceful. It's a platform for her. Well, it's, it's not. she at least didn't get any money for it. I mean, it's not. I think mean, the taxpayers should Will they next be doing a, a, a documentary on Jihadi John, who used to make well, a habit of chopping ac- people's heads off? Well, one yeah. accusation has been that, you know, where was the ten-part... A podcast series about the uh, the grooming gangs, for example. Well, you could go back you to Jimmy Savile. What, 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 a, what to do. were you know what were the BBC and other broadcasters who were very happy to keep promoting and promoting Jimmy Savile, even though allegations were around yeah. and were being dismissed, and other people, you know, DJs and other people and pop stars who have subsequently been found, who were not, you know, their victims were not believed yeah. at the time, you know, and okay, you but can Jimmy say that's Savile historical. Hadn't been all the way up to the Supreme Court. It, uh, but I don't, know, this woman has. I, I, hold that thought. I, <laughs> don't, I don't think that makes any difference. What he did was grotesque. But I oh, must say, it, Gareth it has said we're outraged that our licence money is being used to give this terrorist well, a this, platform. Well, listen, listen to the programme. I'll listen to the programme. Maybe Gareth Graham will... Listen uh, to the programme and we'll listen anyway, to it from up, a journalistic journal- point of view. <laughs>